Uh, hey there folks, it's uh, the E-Man here. Uh, today I want to look at some toys, not really anything in particular, some toys I had gotten. Um, let's see, we got like uh, Joker, Arkham Asylum. Yeah, Joker here, he he he. Yep, yeah, Joker. Really like it when he's Mark Hamill voices him. Uh, then we have, of course, um, can't have the Joker without freaking Batman. They're one and the same. No, no, Batman. We got um, Mar uh, Iggy Koopa from Mario Brothers. Little wand, his little squeakily eyes, or his little like, hair, or whatever that is. Uh, then, of course, we have Paul Atreides from the new Dune movie, an action figure made by McFarlane Toys. He also made like the Batman and the uh, Joker. Yeah, you might be saying, like, what the heck is he wearing? It would have been nicer if he had been wearing, like, if he had been wearing, like, his particular cloak or something, rather than wearing, like, a still suit. I don't know if it's actually a scene where he's just going to be just wearing a still suit. Because usually they wear a still suit in a, well, a still suit to survive in the desert, kind of what, what that is. Like, keeps all the excess moisture in your body and stuff. So you only use like a thimble full of water in the desert. Kind of unique. Well, Dune is a desert planet, so it's available. Uh, and then we got um, uh, Duncan, Idaho. Oh, sorry about that. We got Duncan, Idaho. It's played by Jason Momoa. You know, like the Aquaman dude. Uh, the movie looks pretty good. It's going to be a two-parter or whatever. Yeah. I was going to open them, but that maybe there'd be like an unboxing at some point or something. Yeah, a lot of people have written off these figures as being pieces of crap or something. Yeah. These are, yeah. Yeah, they don't look too bad. It looks kind of closely to what he looks like. Um, I guess it was only four of them at the moment. I guess with each one you get pieces of a Raban character, a figure, that you can put together. And bonus figure. A lot of these action figures things kind of do that. Like the DC Comics ones and all of that. Um, if you don't really know what Dune is, maybe you might want to go read the books or something. I don't know reading is it, but you could do like get audiobooks of Dune. I, I got the audiobook of Dune. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, supposedly the ones I've seen is um, Duncan Idaho, uh, Paul Atreides, um, Lady Jessica, who's Paul's mother, um, and um, man, I think the uh, the Baron Harkonnen. I think yeah, he's like thirty dollars. He's a little bit of a more massive figure than Duncan Idaho is. Yeah, he's a, Jason Momoa is an interesting character. Well, because remember, this movie was supposed to come out back in December, and now it's been pushed to December, October, so we, a lot of stuff came out. Yeah, um, I'm amazed there isn't any video games of Dune or something. I mean, I... Yeah. Well, I mean, we think for a movie, they'd have action... Do action figures for... A lot of movies have tried to do action figures, and it just doesn't do well. I guess it's someone just wanted to... Well, with the way Star Wars is and, you know, the toy market for new Star Wars toys is, like, gone. So, I guess maybe they hope some niche or whatever. I mean, I don't know if anyone else that really, like... Yeah, if anyone else has these, can tell me if there's any other ones out there in the wild. It would be kind of cool to find out. I have, like, the, the, only, the only few that people actually are going to want to buy or look at. Um, let's see, are we getting the uh, mini fridge here? Put six sodas in there. The only fly is it makes a pretty big noise, it kind of is a little bit noisy, a little bit. Uh, I've got my, uh, I think it was like from a little tykes, like kingdom collection or something. I haven't really changed his batteries in like years, so it's kind of impressive. But let me show you what he does. Fire. 
that's his wings. And here's his fire. That's <laughs> kind of cool. I think he had a spot for some figure to go on him or something, but it's a pretty cool, cool toy. You know, I like him. Rawr. Okay. Oh yeah, and the Batman figure came with this like cool little grappley hook thingy. Yeah, the Joker is like a pistol, and he had some just little, you know, wind-up teeth, something from like the uh, yeah the the Arkham Asylum games. Yeah, those games are pretty good. I suggest you go and play those. And now you can get like the whole collection of those. On it. This takes a long time for it to install. A lot of times it let me play the first level and then I got out of that and then I had to wait 30 minutes for it to install the that part of the game. Yeah, there's up above I've got the uh, Doctor Who poster. Yeah, I'd move the camera if I could, but you know, so I have redone my room a little bit, got the dresser back there and whatnot, and then it's been, uh, it's been pretty hot here the last few weeks, it's been like 90s and humid, and it's, it's, it's freaking, you know, because I'm living here in Maine, a lot of you probably think I'm like almost in Alaska, or I mean, almost in Canada, or am I freezing all the time, it's like, nope, not freezing all the time, but it's been, Rather hot. I mean, I think it was like this last year when I was up here. But now that I'm officially living here, it's been kind of, kind of hot. I live in the second, you know, because in my room here on the second floor, it gets pretty hot up here. They don't have any like venting in the roof or anything, so it's like to run an AC all the time, and that's it's kind of loud and like listen when I'm trying to play stuff. You know, I have AC roaring or whatnot. Uh, lighting isn't too bad here. I don't have no ceiling light like I did in West Virginia. It's kind of been kind of downsized coming here. West Virginia is a giant house. You know, that room I used to record in was a nice room when I could spread out and put everything out. But up here, I've, I've spread a few things out. I'm really planning on moving my desk around so that it faces like my television and my uh, gaming um, my gaming setup that I have yeah I've been like you know collecting up stuff like you know so I find some GameCube games or some PS2 games or some Sega games once in a while I, I think I showed off my NES collection you know save it again you know retro game store and I was like, just I got lucky and came in when they had you know, a bunch of those um, high-end games that are like usually like thirty dollars a piece. So you would get a few of them for like four dollars. A lot of the ones that are not so favorable, you know, like Total Recall and whatnot. Well, I don't know if a lot of you watched the Angry Video Game Nerd. He, he's covered a lot of those games. Sometimes it's just funny to get them and and play them and be like, huh, these can't believe that these were considered games at one time or why anyone would have released games like that you know games that just are just hard on purpose and just so crazy well, the thing is I, I usually put, can play GameCube games on my Wii that I have and use like component cables on my television and it doesn't look too bad plus a lot of them can do progressive scan i know a lot of people have you know um you know get game cubes and get like the hdmi um plugins or whatever and i guess that's cool but yeah but this is the original wii you know i just like get all these game systems you know because i've got like a ps4 playstation 3 Got a Saturn, Sega Genesis, uh, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and I got like the 
Super NES Mini, uh, the Sega Genesis Mini. Might do a video on that later since, yes, but one of my favorite YouTubers really likes Sega games, so I might want to try to do something like that. I mean, I, I covered, I think I covered, um, what was it? Yeah, I played some Streets of Rage on the Genesis collection that I have here on the computer. This is funny, those weird, you know, some of the games that you buy, like, multiple times, like, on consoles, on the computer, everything. Of course, you know, I've shot a lot in my video. Well, I have my uh, Elgato capture card here. Um, it's a learning experience trying to use one. Maybe a lot of YouTubers make it look so freaking easy to do. It's, um... A little complicated to do. Uh, playing game footage is fine. It's just, it's a little bit weird because then I have it like showing up on my computer screen and I have it showing up over there because, you know, I have my TV over there. Uh, pretty nice. Um, not too bad of a television. Not anything. It's still a pretty nice television. Like a Sony Bravia. So it's a nice television. Uh, I guess one problem with the capture card is it cannot capture data for the PlayStation 3, which kind of stinks. I've tried, because I, I do I play some of my, my older systems on RGB. I haven't quite got figured out how to really get that to work. Sometimes it could be a little bit confusing how you hook it up. Cause like, yeah. Well, because one HDMI is, you know, the, the console plugs in, and then I think there's... Yeah, where the console goes in, and then there's one that goes out to the monitor, and then, yeah, it it, it can be rather complicated. I mean, I figured it out. I, you've seen me do some videos. Um, it's just hard to figure out how to get your voice to not be echoing. It's a little bit annoying when there's, like, an echo. Of course, on this Logitech camera, I mean, it, it seems to work pretty well, as long as I kind of keep my voice... To a certain extent, you can hear me okay. But I guess a lot of that, you don't really need to hear me. You know, I should probably focus on just doing game footage. But it's been kind of hard to find time for it. And I've had, you know, had things going on. It's been a little bit crazy and whatnot. Yeah, I, I hope some of you, of course, enjoyed the video I did on the, um, the Dark Crystal the novelization. Yeah, let's see. Uh, look through there yeah it's novelization yeah i mean i was i <laughs> read one chapter and it got so huge i could barely even read it the novelization I, I would think if you're a fan of the dark crystal movie if you read the novelization i think it kind of it makes the movie make more sense it might be good to read this before the movie so if you've never seen the movie before read the novelization and then watch the movie the novelization, of course, it fills in a lot of extra stuff that the movie didn't have or they had to cut out from the movie, which is what they kind of do all the time. But it's kind of cool because I think that, you know, I mean, Jim Henson himself kind of wrote out this whole story. Of course, this is written by A.C.H. Smith with illustrations from Brian Froud. Yes, Brian Froud is the main creative consultant for a lot of Jim Henson movies. Is why a lot of the movies have that, why the Dark Crystal has that look to it. Yes, if you guys have seen the Jim Henson movie of Labyrinth, then you know, you know, the one with David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's funny is the, the the little boy Toby in that. I mean, that's actually Brian Froud's son. So, yeah, it was. Interesting for me to know that. Yeah, uh, Labyrinth was made after the Dark Crystal. I guess Jim Henson wasn't very happy with, supposedly not happy with the way the Dark Crystal turned out. But I don't know. I mean, we're still talking about that movie almost four years later. So I guess it was a controversial movie. And the one biggest issue with the Dark Crystal was that it came out around the time of E.T. And, you know, every time a movie comes out, when other big movies are out, it kind of hurts it. I think like the, the 1984 Dune movie, it kind of came out 
right after Return of the Jedi, and everyone had expectations of special effects and everything. It was kind of laxing, which is why I've been looking forward to this uh, movie for quite a while. Hopefully, I, just, I hope things aren't going to get shut down again. I, I really hope so, and I, I really hope not. And then we have all these stars coming out and, like, these stars coming out or whatever and suing movie companies. Because I guess movies are starting to get really cruddy or something or something. I saw the new He-Man series. I, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about that. Nope. Don't want, to, don't want to talk about it. So, give this stuff that I've covered. Some of those toys I wanted to show off that I had recently gotten. Uh, probably just like game pickup video. Kind of show some stuff. Uh, I'm kind of sorry there hasn't been videos for a while. I After Mega Man 8, it was kind of pushing myself to get through it. I just like... I know, I just didn't have the state of mind to be doing videos. Since I'm not doing this for money or whatever, I don't really care. Uh, if you'd like to like and subscribe and like send me some comments about how I'm doing and whatnot. I figured I kind of like to just to do these, these low-key videos, not trying to do editing tricks and craziness. I just want to do a video on basic few things, you know, like how, um, you yeah, know, my buddy, uh, Teddy Rubskin there did put me in one of his videos. I kind of like that he, he's come back in case you guys had noticed he's, he's back and his, but his two Dune movies. So I thought I'd try to show off some of the Dune figures that I had gotten. I know a lot of people thought they were cruddy or something. I don't know if he knows about them yet or not. Uh, yes. Well, the new He-Man thing, I mean, I, yeah. Well, why don't I just set here. <laughs> yes. Yes, I believe there was a He-Man cartoon series that was out back in, um, what is that? Like, four DVDs. 39 episodes. What was this? Oh, yeah. Back in 2000, back in like 2002 or 2009, I think there was a He-Man and the Masters of the Universe series. I remember seeing this on Cartoon Network, and then I looked on um, Amazon, and I saw the DVD box. Yeah, as you see, this DVD box is a little beat up or whatnot. Um, this is really a great series. Now this is what I was kind of expecting with the uh, the newer one that Kevin Smith did. I, I was expecting something like this. I mean, I think the animation's okay. Like you're saying, why is like a technically like 39 year old man really liking this series? But th th this series, this is really good. I mean, they have, they set up like Origins of Skeletor you know, origins of He-Man, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, and I think the voice actors are cool, and it's pretty cool, I think, and, and Tila is, well, I mean, she's tough, yeah, I, and I, not that other one, yeah, the case was kind of broken, so, these games don't fit right or whatever, but I think, I think it's really cool. They have Skeletor, and then there's, like, and then King Hiss shows up, and, yeah, very interesting um, series. I wanted to get on DVD because I couldn't quite find it on streaming. I didn't really, well, I think I think I saw this before streaming kind of became a thing. I never really into streaming, but I kind of had to be because of a lot of shows. Unless you want to spit shell out tons of money for DVDs that fall apart or whatever. I wish I'd gotten on Blu-ray, but whatever. Yeah, all in all, I really like this. I think all the characters are exactly the way they should have been. They have, you know, they have a hard act. They have, yeah, a lot of stuff that really made um, He-Man cool. Cringer, He-Man, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of cool. I don't, yeah. It's pretty good. I, 
I guess Kevin Smith never watched this to figure out what what people want for a He-Man, but whatever. I mean, there's still great things to look at. Cause I I remember watching it when I was a, when I was a, a kid, a very young kid when I watched He-Man. I barely remember He-Man, but it's just kind of cool to find a series, an animated series on DVD that's really cool. You know, I like, like, Pirates of Dark Water and uh, SWAT Cats and stuff. And it was cool to hear they were trying to bring back a lot of this stuff, like SWAT Cats or whatever. But the way things are right now, I, I wouldn't want them to bring something back. Because, you know, the whole woke thing or whatever, I, I don't really understand that at all. But that here's He-Man. He's a strong male character. Who really cares? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did I, I think I've forgotten about showing this one. Uh, Star Wars, the Rogue, Rogue, Rogue One um, character. Uh, yeah, what is it? Jen Urso, or Ursa or whatever. Yeah, I, I, liked, I liked Rogue One. Um, so though the Star Wars story was kind of like, huh. I don't know. But then, then of course, then we have... Um, the Last Jedi, all that stuff, and I don't know. I'm not going to go there. Yeah, now Disney's going to, like, reset it all, and, and I, I don't know how you can do that. I just liked Rogue One. It was just kind of a cool movie. It, it feels like some kind of, uh, you know, like one of those old, you know, like kind of like like World War Two kind of like commando mission movies where they, like, go in and have to steal you know, steal top secret stuff or something and then try to get out and whatever. That's kind of cool. This is a figure of her. Kind of like a, a little more like a Barbie doll. They just kind of put plastic pieces on. I don't know how it doesn't really look like she does in the movie very much. I guess you could get the Death Trooper or First Order Stone Trooper or Darth Vader. Like, where is, like, the people... I like Jen Erso's character. It's just, well, I don't want to give away if you haven't seen it. Rogue One was kind of a movie that takes place in the Star Wars universe, but tries to be its own thing, which I kind of appreciate. It, it was trying to be its own, its own kind of thing, you know. It does try to fit into A New Hope, but not as solo a Star Wars story seemed to like really try to fit into something. It didn't make much sense, but. That and they kind of got her at goodwill and whatever. Yeah. Well, I guess that's enough. I, I don't really want this video to be too freaking long. Just off some toys and showing that I'm still around, not going to like vanish and not do videos. Um, as I said, I was really glad that I was able to be in a Teddy Rub Skin um, video, even though that video was like one of the first few videos I ever did. I think it was, like, before I even did, um, a lot of my, one of my, uh, game reviews or whatever, I try to do a review, and then I just end up, <laughs> you just end up watching me play it, but, yeah, I mean, that's ultimately what it kind of is with me. I, I really like the games to play. I mean, I have a problem if I, I keep finding all these old retro games, and I'm like, oh, I'll just get this and that. And, you know, and then it's like all of a sudden I've got all these, these um, backlog, this giant backlog of games I want to do or things I want to talk about. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and you know, maybe comments and stuff so I kind of know what kind of to do. I didn't want anyone to come out and say I'm like trying to copy to your rub skin or something, but you know, I kind of he sometimes he talks about toys because he has an interesting toy collection, and he usually talks about snacks and um, other stuff, other stuff like that. Um, I guess maybe it's kind of a joke. I'd kind of talk about um, my uh, favorite kind of snack here, um, goldfish. The flavor blasted with extra extra cheddar 
Uh, well, as you can imagine, it has a cheddar taste, but a lot more, um, yeah, a lot more um, pronounced kind of taste. Yeah, probably not like the, the most far out flavor, but it's, you know, the snack that smiles back, goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they wear sunglasses. Why? why? Baked fish have sunglasses, or have eyes for that matter. Yeah, I don't know they call them snack crackers. I guess technically they are crackers. I tried the multigrain ones before, and I'm like, oh, no. But yeah, these are pretty good. Like a blasted goldfish. I don't know if they would taste good with turpentine or whatever that says in the song. But yeah, there's my little snack, kind of bonus snack video there. I have a pretty big, pretty rather strong flavor. Make sure I have something to eat. Pretty, pretty good. Find those just about the flavor blast and all kinds of ones. They, they got pizza and other flavors. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up then. Okay. Um, I'll see you guys on the next, on my next uh, video, hopefully. Um, I'll catch you guys later. Uh, bye.